Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name is Michael Levan. Thank you so much for joining me today. And what I want to talk about is GitOps. So originally, I kind of didn't really know where GitOps was going, but now I think I have a pretty good picture. So if you're not familiar with GitOps, essentially what it means is your desired state configuration, your configuration management, all of that stuff is done via GitHub. So let's say you deploy an application to Kubernetes and the deployment.yaml and all of your different code configurations are in GitHub. Well, what's gonna happen is Kubernetes is gonna look at GitHub as the source of truth. So as that source of truth, it'll know what application to deploy, what Docker image to use, all of that good stuff. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take a look at how to deploy a Flux connector, which is for GitOps, to an Azure Kubernetes services cluster, although, you could pretty much do this with any Kubernetes cluster. And then we're gonna see a Python application running on that cluster. So with that, let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna take a look at the Kubernetes cluster and where I'm storing the Python application. So this is my Kubernetes cluster and it's running inside of Azure in AKS or Azure Kubernetes services. Now, of course, as I said, you don't need to use AKS. You could pretty much use any Kubernetes cluster you want. So this is the Kubernetes cluster that's running. If I go to the workloads, you can see that the Python application isn't running, the Flux operator isn't running. Then if I go to the registry here, I'm gonna go down to the repositories and I see my Python application that's called PupWeb. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna head over to VS Code and then we're gonna kick off the code itself. Here are some instructions that I wrote down, but before we get to this, I just wanna show you the YAML deployment so what I'm doing is I have this metadata for the name. I'm doing a deployment and I'm doing a service. So this is going to be a Kubernetes manifest that I'm using. And then what I'm doing is I'm specifying that I want six replicas. So six pods running of the same application. And then for the image, I'm pointing to that registry. Now, of course, you're not going to have access to this, which is perfectly fine. You can go ahead and you can create your own or I mean, realistically, you could put any image in here. So you could put like Nginx latest that's being pulled from Docker Hub. And then for the container port, I'm just using port 5000. And then for the service here, again, I'm going to be using port 5000. And then I'm also going to be using a load balancer. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the instructions themselves. So first things first, you're going to have to install the Flux CTL. It's just the Flux command line. If you're not on Windows, that's perfectly okay. You can install it anyway. If you're on uh, Mac, you can use Brew. If you're on a Linux distribution, you can download from source. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to my Kubernetes cluster. And if I go like this, for example, you're going to see that I'm not connected to any Kubernetes cluster. Okay. So I'm going to run AZ AKS, get credentials minus G, AZ 400. That's the resource group that the cluster is in. And then the name of the cluster is Flux Test 92. So as you can see, now we're currently set. I'm gonna run kubectl get nodes again and we can see our nodes in here. So now is when we start to configure Flux. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new namespace for Flux to exist in. kubectl create namespace Flux, okay? Next, we're gonna have this long line here. I'm gonna paste it and then I'm gonna go over it. So the first thing is you're using fluxctl to install a GitHub repo that GitHub repo is gonna be the source of truth for this application that's being deployed. So I'm specifying down here my Git username, my Git email, and then this is really the important part, the Git URL. So this is gonna be the URL that Flux is constantly looking at. It's gonna be the containerized pup app. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run this. And as we can see, the deployment for Flux and everything has been created. So if I do, for example, kubectl, get pods from namespace flux we can see here that flux is running and it uses memcache as well for cache data okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to check the deployment status all right i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to run that and as we can see flux has been deployed successfully so now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to give flux identity access so what this means is this essentially, this command right here on line 21, it spits out a public SSH key for you. And then with that public SSH key, you're gonna wanna put that as a deploy key in your GitHub repo. And we're gonna take a look at that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run this. 
And again, I have some instructions here for this, but let's just go ahead and do this together. So I'm gonna copy this public SSH key, and then we're gonna head over to GitHub really quick. Okay, so I'm at my GitHub here, and I'm gonna go to my containerized Python app. I'm gonna go to settings. Then I'm gonna go down to deploy keys. And as you can see, I already have a flux deploy key here because I was playing around and testing this before the video. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete that. And then I'm gonna click add deploy key. From here, I'm gonna give it a title, flux. And then with the key, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paste this in. Now this is very important. You must allow write access for this key on the GitHub repo. That's because flux needs the ability to essentially have administrator access to the GitHub repo. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna click add key. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna type in my GitHub password here. So now we have this deploy key. So let's head back over to VS Code and take a look at what we need to do next. Okay, so now that VS Code is back open, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right here on line 31. So we're gonna see by default, Flux syncs every five minutes. If you wanna manually sync Flux, you absolutely can. You just have to run the following. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run this. And what we're gonna see here is it has been successfully applied. So now let's take a look at some Flux workloads. We're gonna run Flux CTL list workloads for the namespace Flux. All right, and as we can see, we do have this workload now running. So what's gonna happen is if I run kubectl get pods, now we can see pupweb is running. If I run kubectl get deployments, we can see the deployment right here. And then finally, if I run kubectl get service, we're gonna see that the pupweb load balancer is running. So everything from this Kubernetes manifest is now up and running. And as you can see, like I didn't run any kubectl create commands or kubectl apply commands or anything like that to kick off this deployment. It kicked off for the pupweb to now be running on AKS because the flux operator took a look at GitHub and poof, here's our application. Now you may be wondering, well, how does it know what directory to look in? So if I go ahead and I scroll back up here, let me just scroll over a bit. You see this git path? Now this is crucial. Your git path must equal where your Kubernetes deployment workloads are. So right from here, you see under workloads, that's where my deploy python.yaml is. So Flux knows, okay, I'm gonna be looking in this git path for the Kubernetes manifests. So with that, that's how you can get started using Flux on AKS or pretty much any other Kubernetes cluster. Thank you so much for watching.